This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information computing and communication. It is the sixth one in a series of video clips on computer security. Following the previous video clip on password authentication, the present clip will briefly touch upon authentication using additional tools such as biometrics or hardware tokens. For IT systems that involve your privacy or your money, passwords are nowadays considered insufficient. For such cases, one resorts to either two-channel or two-factor authentication. Two-channel authentication entails sending the password as usual over the normal internet channel, but then securing that with an additional one-time PIN code sent by the target computer system over a separate second channel typically via SMS, which the user then repeats over the internet. This is the solution that many internet giants such as Google, some banks such as Swiss Post Finance and medical and commercial websites have adopted today since almost everyone has a mobile phone. As an alternative that many other banks have adopted since years before mobile phones were so common, we have two-factor authentication, in which biometrics or special hardware tokens are used in addition to passwords, as we now discuss. Biometrics authentication involves verifying something that a user is, for instance, recognizing their fingerprint, their hand shape, their voice print, their face, or the iris of their eye. Biometrics is in fact the oldest authentication technique in the real world. This is how prehistoric humanoids and animals recognize one another, and this is how babies recognize their parents. What is new is the use of biometrics also in information technology. One problem with biometrics, however, is that while everyone is different and our bi biometrics are different for every single person, our biometrics are not secret. Thus, while it is easy to replace a password that has been broken or so stolen, replacing biometrics is not an option. It is a serious problem. Look, for instance, at the fingerprint theft technique advertised by the hacker video clip listed on this slide. Replacing someone's finger after their fingerprint was stolen is, of course, not an option. Biometrics authentication also suffers from so-called false negatives, which is what happens when someone is rejected because their fingerprint is not recognizable, for instance, if they cut their finger while cooking the day before. And also, what is called false positives is a problem, which is what happens when a hacker manages to imitate, for instance by stealing, a legitimate user's biometrics and spoofing their identity using those stolen biometrics. This is why biometrics is fine as a second factor in addition to passwords, but rarely found, if ever, as the only authentication factor in lieu of passwords. Besides biometrics, the other classical two-factor authentication method calls for the use of something that users hold, namely hardware tokens. These come in different flavors. All of them include a tiny cryptographic chip or a reader for a chip card that include a personal cryptographic key for the user. The first type of token shown here has no computer interface, but a user interface with a small display and a numeric keypad. With this sort of token, the target computer sends the user a unique one-time random number called the challenge that the user must type into their token, which then displays the personally encrypted version of that challenge that the user must, again, read off the token display and type back into their device keyboard to send to the target computer together with their password. The second type of token has no computer interface and not even a numeric keypad, but just a small display. Instead of the target computer sending a one-time challenge to, the, to be encrypted, 
This sort of token takes as the challenge generator an internal clock ticking in minutes and permanently displaying the personally encrypted version of that clock's current reading, which the user then needs to type into their device keyboard and send to the target system, again, together with their password. The third type of token has no user interface at all, but instead of computer interface, usually a USB plug. Such tokens function exactly as the previous ones, except that the token in the target IT system correspond directly through the user's end device without the user having to read or type anything anywhere. The fourth and most sophisticated type of token has both a computer interface, a USB plug, and a user interface with a small display and just two buttons, a red one and a green one. With such tokens, all communication with the target IT system also goes through the user's device without requiring the user to type anything. However, whatever action the target computer is trying to perform does get displayed on the token display. And the user can accept or reject that action by pressing the red button or the green button. The advantage of such tokens over the previous kinds is that if the user's device happens to be infected by malware, that malware cannot surreptitiously log on or cause any other action on the target computer without the user being alerted by the token. The problem of all the authentication techniques seen so far is that they are all one way only. They authenticate the user to the target IT system, but not the other way around. This is in fact a major issue today because it allows hackers to engage into all flavors of phishing and farming, trying to convince naive users to log on to their usual target systems that look alike, but are not the actual real ones. In doing so, such naive users type in their user ID and password into what looks like their usual system, but in fact is a fake system under the hacker's control. And the hackers promptly steal the user ID and the password they just received to go log on to the real target system and siphon off any money that may be on that user's account. The only way to prevent such hacks is to always require two-way authentication in which also the target IT system must prove to the user that they are the real one and the right one. Unfortunately, in a password-only world, the first party that would give its password to the other would be betrayed or could be betrayed by a phishing or farming attack. Thus, two-way authentication requires by necessity an underlying crypto process. And since people cannot encrypt anything without the help of some crypto algorithm, two-way authentication requires that users must have access to some crypto engine. This is exactly what happens with websites supporting the HTTPS over SSL or TLS protocols, which display a little lock icon in the HTTPS prefix in the browser address bar. In such cases, the target web server first identifies itself to the browser by digitally signing some initial message that the browser's crypto engine can verify. Thereafter, the browser sends to the target server a secret crypto key under which all subsequent traffic is encrypted, including the user password. So, this concludes our brief overview of authentication mechanisms.